There's a reason why you separate military and the police. One fights the enemy of the state. The other serves and protects the people. When the military becomes both, then the enemies of the state tend to become the people. Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. For more than a week now, the United States has been under siege by terrorists. It began in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and has now spread to almost every locality in the United States, and even small towns aren't exempt. Now, the press would have you believe that these are either peaceful protesters, or that they're wholesale rioting, looting, um, arm robbery, armed robbery, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and the attempted murder of innocents is somehow justified. Well, it is not. In fact, it is the textbook definition of terrorism, which is the use of violence or the threat of violence, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political goals. If I could drop my mic right now, I would. Now, indeed, I have some African-American viewers who believe that terrorism is justified because peaceful, peaceful protests have simply never worked. Well, tell that to Dr. Martin Luther King, you historical ignoramus. Knowing history as I do, I'm quite certain that he is rolling in his grave. Now, some believe that they're starting a civil war. If that's the case, you are in for an extremely rude awakening. The average person will not tolerate wholesale rioting, looting, robbery, armed robbery, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and attempted murder of innocents. If you continue this, when the military comes, not if, to kill you, the average person will be in favor of it. The military will be making their homes and their businesses safe from terrorists. What will happen is very simple. The military will simply shoot people until the rest give up and go home. The killing will be indiscriminate, killing the terrorist and innocent alike, because in a rampaging mob, it's impossible to tell terrorists from innocents. But not only that, it will add to the chances of President Trump's re-election. No one will miss terrorists, and they'll be happy that he rid the world of their pestilence. But in any case, the terrorists have no end game. From the comments in my videos, it's quite clear that the only goal is the death of all police everywhere. So what happens after that? Have you given the slightest thought about what you'd do if you actually accomplished that ridiculous and impossible goal? Of course not. You're just terrorists for the sake of being terrorists. You have no idea what you actually want to accomplish. No sane person wants you around. When you're dead, good riddance. Nor can you justify the wholesale rioting, looting, robbery, assault, armed robbery, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and the attempted murder of innocents by saying, but what about George Floyd? We're doing it for him. No, you're not. You're doing it for the sheer sick pleasure that you derive from rioting, looting, robbery, armed robbery, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, and the attempted murder of innocents. Precisely no one anywhere of any race or creed believes that what happened to George Floyd was anything other than outright murder. Floyd's murder, murderer now has been fired and is in jail waiting trial for murder in the second degree and a second degree manslaughter. The three officers who stood by and did nothing while Floyd was murdered have been fired and charged with second degree aiding and abetting felony murder and second-degree aiding and abetting manslaughter. Justice has been served. And once again, if I could drop my mic, I would at this point. There is simply no excuse for a terrorist activity at this point. I urge you, please, go home before you are shot full of holes from an M16. Now, all of that said, and not for a picosecond, excusing any terrorist activities, 
Policing in the United States does need to change for the good of everyone. You see, over the course of my lifetime, we have allowed our police to become militarized to the detriment of everyone. Now, I'm a big fan of the old TV series Dragnet, and there was one memorable episode from the 1960s about how the LAPD screened officer candidates. First, there was an oral interview consisting of one experienced cop and two civilians. The cop was to determine if he'd want this person as a colleague and the civilians to determine if they wanted him in a job where this candidate would have to protect and serve them. And then came the background check. The cops had to check and interview everyone with whom the employer, the candidate had worked in the last five years. Now, in the case of the episode in question, well, the candidate that Friday and Gannon were investigating, uh, they had to drive all over California to do it. But in so doing, they discovered that the candidate had lied about his list of employers, leaving about a six-month gap. Well, they ultimately found the gap. The candidate had worked for six months as a deputy in a small-town sheriff's department. The candidate had been fired from that job for being too strong-armed, nearing the definition of police brutality. And the can this kind of candidate was consequently denied entry into the LAPD. And I think that probably that kind of background check should be done for all of our police everywhere. And then there's the training. A lot of cops are ex-military at this point. The military mindset is by definition totally different from what's needed for police. Particularly for Iraq and Afghanistan vets, they are constantly on the lookout for IEDs or civilians who might snipe them or shoot at them from anywhere in an urban area. Now this is an appropriate mindset for the military. When I taught IT at um, the place that shall not be named, I taught an Iraq veteran who had barely escaped death when an IED exploded under a transport and thus stopping this caravan that he was in. And then they were immediately fired upon. However, this mindset is totally inappropriate for police work. Now, good training for police means that such a candidate will be cured of the military mindset and more deeply programmed to serve and protect. And if they can't be cured of the military mindset, then they should be thrown out on the street. And I think probably that all of these things were missing in Minneapolis. However, the biggest problem about all police departments everywhere is militarization. In Dragnet's era, the average cop had a sidearm, a billy club, and a shotgun in the trunk just for emergencies. No flak vests, nothing, just a pistol, billy club, and a shotgun. Nor did the police departments have any military hardware. No M16s, no grenades. They had tear gas, and if it were happening today, I would grant them flashbang grenades. But that was all. It started to all go to hell when they invented SWAT teams in the early 1970s, and that created special teams all decked out in military gear. They got increasingly aggressive as time went on. So fast forward now to the end of the Iraq War. The federal government started selling military assets that they no longer needed, and they sold them to every police department, including small-town sheriffs. Sniper rifles, M16s, troop carriers, and tanks with the barrels replaced with those long poles that they use to smash through, smash through just about anything up to including bank vaults. That all became the norm. But none of this should ever have happened. From the SWAT teams right down to the military hardware, it reinforced the military mindset, and probably altered police training in a very negative way. So I say, demilitarize the police. Return them to a pistol on their hip, a billy club, and a shotgun in the trunk. I wouldn't even give them flak vests. Just plain old uniforms for uniformed officers, blue shirts, and slacks. Now, if there is a report of a meth lab, for example, somewhere, then there should be no SWAT teams smashing into people's houses and only after destroying the premises discovered that they were entirely wrong, as is the case, by the way, in the Colorado home that you can see behind me. Nor should it be possible to engage in swatting, in which someone anonymously calls in a tip about, say, a meth lab belonging to someone that they just don't happen to like. Instead of all that crap, you put a cop at the back door of the suspected meth lab. 
His partner knocks on the front door and questions the occupants. Now, maybe they'd call for backup just to put two cops on each door. Now, if there's a meth lab and the suspect makes a break for the back door, well, the cops would catch him. If the suspect didn't make a break for the back door, well, the cops are still going to arrest him. If, as is the case now with the hundreds of terrorist acts that we are seeing, the local cops simply couldn't handle it, the mayor should call the governor and ask for the National Guard. The Guard would be the only ones with the kind of firepower that we now see at almost every police department. Demilitarized police would then be forced to take a more hands-off approach. Police brutality laws would also either need to you know, be altered or at least reflect the fact that the police don't have the authority to do anything other than hold suspects at gunpoint, frisk them for weapons, handcuff them, read them their rights, and then put them in the back of the squad car. And again, this combined with training that emphasizes that an officer candidate is no longer in the military and that the urban warfare mentality is not only unnecessary, but it is absolutely a detriment. I'm sure, I'm sure police departments would scream, oh, we need the hardware because today's criminals are so much worse and they, do, they just, they got, we got to have it. No, nah, that's just nonsense. They, they become used to being militarized and the idea that they're not just frightens them. So once again, not excusing our current terrorism problems for one picosecond. I think that, you know, the police need to be retrained and demilitarized. Militarizing them was a very bad thing. And as Adamas said in my introduction, there's a reason that we separate police and the military. One serves and protects the people. The other fights the enemies of the state. When they become both, the people tend to become the enemies of the state. And that is all that I've got to say about that. I would certainly love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks. I'll do my best to get back to you. So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.